peace, Ashe, Islam, Rahu Bet, Namaste, Onichiwa. Whatever the greeting is in your ex uh, respective language, I am your brother Crumb here for another installation of Crumb TV. This one, this one is called Ponder Explains Everything. So, if I could just go back uh, just a little bit to to help the family follow me. So we all know that Facebook. And I think Instagram, I don't know, but Facebook kicked um, uh, Farrakhan off the Internet. And then after they kicked uh, uh, Farrakhan off the Internet, Farrakhan went and had a rally in uh, Chicago at the uh, Catholic Church. Uh, I'm, sure, I'm sure it's not uh, it's not called a church, uh, the Catholic, wherever the Catholics pray at. And um uh, the uh, father of the, of the Catholic Church, I don't know if he's an archbishop or just a father or what, he, um, he exchanged a kiss with, uh, with um, Farrakhan. So he, he exchanges the kiss with Farrakhan. Uh, and for me, I called him out on that. I called him out on it not being an uh, innocent greeting, but I said signs and symbols are for the conscious mind. And what we are seeing is something more than what we believe we are seeing. So then... I had made a video and showed the kiss. I did a live. I explained, you know, everything behind it. And then uh, Brother Ponder came on my live, my Instagram live from yesterday. And him and I, well, he added a lot of value. I clipped something from yesterday's live. I took just a, a, a piece of it. The live is on YouTube, but I took a clip from that. Uh, it's raining. I got to get out the rain. I took a clip from that. Um, video and I made it my Instagram post for today and a lot of the Moors uh, more so than anybody had grievances with it which is fair you know it's fair uh, to have a grievance no problem but you know some Moors I personally have relationships with um, and even they had grievances with it and you know I'm like dad that's my brother who, have, like, who, who has a grievance with it though I pay attention to everybody and I'm considerate of the genuine people so then uh, I told brother Ponder I said brother you kind of started something and I would like you to finish it for me I don't like to speak for people I want people to speak for themselves and um, explain what he meant now um, in yesterday's live Instagram live he talked to, and I'm just, I'm just waiting for him to get on right now I'm waiting for him to get on right now uh, so while I'm waiting for him to get on I'll just talk to the family uh, while we were going live he talked about secret societies and how you know it's, it's not the FBI that has put a lot of division amongst us we ourselves have created a lot of our own division now before I go into what I believe he was saying, or I know he was saying, I just wanted to say really quickly with all sincerity, I was watching Home Team. Home Team is this YouTube channel on, oh, well, YouTube channel on YouTube, and I really like it a lot because Home Team goes through African-based history. And uh, one of Home Team's videos said, was titled, uh, Five Reasons Why uh, Africa Failed. And one of the reasons home team had given of why Africa fell was that, um, hold on two seconds. I'm, I'm just going to text Ponder because he should have been here by now. Give me two seconds. I'm sorry. Oh, no, 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 no. Speak of the devil and he shall come. Speak. Here he is, family. Talk for nobody. I can't tell you what that man meant. All I can tell you is the reason I bring my brother on is because I know. Call me the devil, like man. <laughs> Brother, brother, brother. You got Peace of love, bro. Peace of love. You. Peace of love. What you happened? Started, you started something. You started something, brother. Uh oh. What's going on? So, you and I went live yesterday on Instagram. And uh, you shared some very good information. And I liked it so much. I made. I, I clipped a piece of what you said. And I made it an Instagram post. Now, on that Instagram post, you know, I title it, you know, my titles can be very controversial, but the title was, <laughs> um, 
uh, black secret societies, Moors, Masons, NOI. And particularly, it was the Moors who really were upset with me in terms of even saying that. And they were upset with you. They said, you know, it was, um, you, weren't, you weren't right and exact. You may have been close, but you missed the mark because the Moors are not a secret society. There are no more secrets. Noble Juali got rid of all that. So uh. <laughs> cut it out. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Um, but actually, what I wanted to do, um, you know, if I could just kind of get it started, I would yeah. read some of these comments that the family uh, was making just to give you an opportunity to kind of clear the air, you know, to make sure we're on the same page. All right, so here we go. I'm, I'm pulling it up right now. Let me see what they said about you. And I want you at your convenience just to, you know, just let the people know what's really good. All right, so here we go. All right, it's up, it's up. I'm just, I'm just getting comfortable, just getting comfortable. Uh, that's the one, and here we go. All right, so let me go through these comments. Let's see what they say. Um, more is nothing nice to say. More was a disrespectful term. Uh, a, a disrespectful term too. Uh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. It was a disrespectful term too. You might as well say the N word if that's the case. And the NOI teaching was founded by Elijah Muhammad. Noble Ju Ali took the version of the Aquarian gospel and turned it into the Cir uh, Circle 7 Quran. Uh, now that's right and exact. Okay, yeah. I, I mean, uh, I, I, think, I think I had addressed that, brother, when I told him, uh, well, if you say the honor of Elijah Muhammad, Baha'u'llah is the artificer of the NOI, then I asked, well, who was his teacher? And uh, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad teacher was Farad Muhammad, uh, Farad Muhammad, Farad Muhammad, <laughs> Farad Muhammad was his teacher, and Farad Muhammad was a huge advocate member of the, of the um, Moorish Science Temple, or should I say the Moorish Temple of Science. He was a member of that organization. His teacher was Noble Jew Ali. So, once, once Farad Muhammad broke away from uh, Noble Jew Ali's camp after the, the passing of Noble Jew Ali, may peace be upon him, once he passed away, whatever the case was, then uh, Farad Muhammad went to Detroit and started his own organization. Now, these organizations, let's get down to the root. Like I said yesterday, the um, Moore Science Temple organization, it's an organization. They say we're not an organization. It's, a, it's a, by definition, they're an organization. The Moore Science Temple of America. He, and a loser. Reinstituted? Listen, listen. They tell you in the teaching of the Moore Science Temple, if you listen, that Noble Jew Ali resurrected the temple up in Newark, New Jersey. So a resurrection means he revived a temple. So my brain said, look, well, what was it prior to him doing that? Prior to him doing that, it was a group of Israelites or Ishmaelites. And I, I wish I could share a picture with everybody. It was a group of Ishmaelites who were Moors also. It was the old Canaanite temple. It was the old Canaanite temple up in Newark, New Jersey. Noble Jew Ali, along with, uh, what's the brother's name? i call his name in a minute. But the brother was a huge advocate in Freemasonry. He actually came from Egypt over to the United States during the 1920s, and he decreed that there are no real Masons in America. That's what he said. And what him and Noble Drew Ali did at first was, this brother was implementing Masonic um, rhetoric and Masonic, I guess, uh, ritualistic movement in the Moorish Science Temple. Noble Drew Ali did not want that to happen. That's when Drew Ali left Newark, New Jersey, and he went to uh, Chicago. He went to Chicago, and that's when he opened the Morse, there you go. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Now, this right here is when Noble Juali went to um, Chicago, right? Right. And it tells you 1928. 
Well, there's pictures. If you put in Google, if you type in there, um, uh, something like the original Moore Science Temple, it's this group of brothers, it's an older picture. It's a brother and a couple of sisters out there. And it has a picture of, of, of a Jewish star in the back. And it says the Canaanite temple. And it says Ishmaelites or Israelites, these are the Moors. This, this picture was taken prior to 1928. This is 1923. And this is New York, New Jersey. And for all the Moors, the Moors know when they ask you, where was the Moors Science Temple founded? It's going to tell you New York, New Jersey. Well, what was in New York, New Jersey? What was going on in New Jersey? Because Drew Ali didn't start his temple until he went to Chicago in 1928. So hmm. you got 1923, 24, 25, 26, and 28 happened. You have five years later. So what was Drew Ali doing in those particular time between 23, right, into 24? And you, it's a newspaper clip, and it says, it says, Professor Timothy Drew, the Egyptian add-up student. He was in school, y'all. He was learning. He was not a prophet at this time. He was a student. Find out who his teacher was, and then unlock the whole situation. So everybody had a teacher. That's the whole point. Everybody had a teacher. It just happened with Noble Drew Ali. The student became the teacher. That's all that was. The Ooh. student became a teacher, and he was elevated to the title. The title of prophet. It's a title. A title that was bestowed upon him. Right? So right. after Drew Ali took his teachings from Newark, New Jersey, then he went up into uh, Chicago, 1928. The Morris Science Temple was founded. Prior to the Morris Science Temple, it was called the Morris Temple of Science. Now, let's deal with this Ooh. word more. This word more, people from different areas speak different languages. In America, we say White House because we speak what's called English. For those who are in Spain or in any Latin-speaking country, they would not say White House. They would say Casablanca. For anybody that is of the Latin persuasion or uh, Spaniard or whatever you want to call it, um, they wouldn't say black. They would say negro. Negro. The word more is an adjective. And we only call it the beginning part of it. It's actually blackamoor. Blackamoor is the adjective. I think the brother... Um, Taj, Taj does a, a great job of breaking down the etymology of the word more and understanding blackamoor is the adjective. Blackamoor, it's not more, it's blackamoor. It, it, it's the person. There what we go, brother. Talking about? Yes, sir. You see that big, that shield of David back there? You see yep. that right there? For all the moors, and tell the moors to deal with this right here. Ask the moors to deal with this picture right here. You see, brother, got that right hand up? <laughs> yeah, I see Ain't it. nobody, look. Ain't nobody got a fez nowhere in there. Can, 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 you see the, can you see the date over there, brother? No, I no? can't. No, okay. But that, that, that right there is in New York, New Jersey, and it says the Zionist Temple, the Moorish Zionist Temple. You see that across the top right there? What did it say? The Moorish Zionist Temple. That right. there was in New York, New Jersey. See, behind the brother right there, it's the American flag, U.S. flag, and, and this was called the so-called the, the Jewish flag or the flag of Israel. Right? This is in Newark, New Jersey. This is not in Palestine, people. This is in America. If you do your research, you will find out like this people right here was actually was actually actually coming out of what was called the tribe of Ben Ishmael. Ben Ishmael tribe went up to Indiana, Indianapolis. This is in 1886, 87. See, when you don't know history, they can tell you anything, you'll believe it. Right. And anybody listening to me right now, I'm not here to convince none of y'all. I'm not trying to persuade nobody. Do your own research. This is just information. I just did more research than you did. That's all it was. Go look it up and find out. Newark, New Jersey, Timothy Drew, the Egyptian student, came out of Newark, New Jersey. He goes to Chicago. 1928 opens up the Morris Science Temple of America. That was it. One of his students, one of the guys in that temple, was a guy by the name of F. Farad Fad Farad Muhammad. Farad Muhammad, yes, was in the Moor Science Temple. Upon the, and I dare to say this right here, upon the assassination of Abu Ali, because he wouldn't turn over. Um, after he was brutally beaten, they tried to put murder on the brother. They tried to put embezzlement. All these crazy charges they put on these black organizations today, they tried to put these charges on the brother and said so the brother ended up uh, passing away. After the passing of Noah Drew Ali, his right-hand man, I don't know if it was Kirkman Bay or the other brother, his limo driver, 
tried to proclaim that they was a resurrected prophet. They was a prophet. Right, 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 right. For a short period of time, Farad Muhammad held the seat of Sheik, of Grand Sheik. Look that up in the Moor Science Temple. Farad Muhammad left the Moor Science Temple, went to Detroit, which is right next door to Chicago, and that's when the Nation of Islam began to take flight. Now, his right hand man and his crony, okay, was a man by the name of Clarence 13X. That's where the, the, the gods and founders of the earth come out of, right? So the Nation teacher. Of the gods and earth. There you go. So for W. Farad Muhammad then takes on his mentee, who is Elijah Poole Bay. Let this thing in for a minute. Elijah Poole Bay, who also can be found with a fez on his head because he was a Moor also. What he did was he went and put the uh, the sun, the moon, and the star on his fez, and they became what was called the fruits of Islam, and they became called the nation of Islam. Now, in the nation of Islam, in its beginning, they had no assimilation with the Arabs of so-called. There it is. There it he is. Does have a fez on. Now, now you you won't catch no other member of the nation of Islam wearing a fez. Because they're not Moors, not for the Moor Science Temple. But because he came out of the Moor Science Temple, he came out of that teachings under the under uh, Prophet Noble Jew Ali. He kept the fez on, kept the tassel on. And he just slid over and got his own organization started. He got the Masonic black and white on. Take take note, people. He got oh the bow tie God. on. Because he also was a Mason as well. So when I tell y'all yesterday that the Masonic Order, the NOI, and in, 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 in uh, uh, the Moorish Science Temple are all one and the same. I know what I'm talking about. Go look up the fact that Elijah Poole Bay was also a Mason. Elijah Poole Bay also was Nation of Islam. He was also part of under the teachings of um, the Moorish Science Temple. Now, um, not to get too far off subject, because I definitely want to stay where we're at. But um, a lot of people, you know, because like, these organizations, in terms of what we deal with as a people, we consider them schools of thought. Is that a fair statement? That's all they are, brother. That's it. And, you know, you can only get a certain degree when you go to elementary. You can only get a certain degree when you go to uh, uh, high school. And you get a certain degree when you go to college. And, you yep. know, Elijah made himself a master student by getting all his degrees. Um, and right. the only other person I can really think of off, off the top who went through all the degrees and schools of thought was um, Dr. Malachi Z. York. That's it. And I don't see what is so stigmatized about going through the degrees of all the schools because I was told by the Moors, well, we only deal with the Moors and we don't uh, uh, concern us with, uh, 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 with the Masonic teachings or, you know, any other. She, she, but then she. when we deal with uh, 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 um, uh, Dr. Malachi Z. York, you know, he kind of got away from those, that stigmatized idea that I can only read this book. Like, you know, like, like the Christians, Christians will tell you, you can only read the Bible or you can only, right. read, you could, you know, if you're, a, if, 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 if you're a Baptist, you can't go with the seven day Adventist. So if you're a seven day Adventist, you can't go with the Protestants. You know, right. everybody was scared to cross those lines in terms of other schools of thought. And from what you just saying, Elijah Poole Bay was doing the same thing. Dr. Malachi Z. York did. And Absolutely. Um, I, I also wanted to point out, you know, not trying to, uh, down nobody, but there's a, another connection between the two because um, when everybody threw all that dirt on Elijah Poole Bay, I'm sorry, excuse me, when, that, when all the things that Elijah Poole Bay did in the dark came to the light, it was almost exactly like what happened to Dr. Malachi Z. York. However, we look at the two in two different ways. Both of them uh, 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 went to several different schools of thought. Both of them yep. were uh, well studied and both of them also had these relationship with younger women. However, we often see Elijah Poole Bay will get a pass where Dr. Malachi Z. York will be vilified. That's true. But we also had to had to keep things in perspective with all our so-called black leaders. And it, it just came out a couple weeks ago, I guess, to the full uh, mainstream media dealing with uh, Dr. Martin Luther King and his affairs. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? And any person of power in their affairs, what people have to realize is as a man, any man, no matter race, creed, or color, when we come into this thing called power, we attract certain energies. And women, women, women are very attracted to men of power. Now, the manipulation 
it's something psychological. So I'm not sure what was going on with Dr. Malachi Z. York. And I've actually talked to a sister who was at the camp with Dr. Malachi Z. York down in Edison, Georgia. And she said everything you heard was all wise, right, and exact about what he was doing. Um, now, there was a there was a more a, a deeper um, esoteric um, initiation process he was doing, much like you learn in the occult. And you did a great lecture on this uh, with, with, with certain children, you steal their innocence. And you all know about the Christ consciousness coming down the spinal column going to what's called the, um, the the sacrum bone, right? Well, when you enter into a child or even an animal for that for that uh, manner, you're able to, to, to pull that source out of them by that way. Now, was Dr. York into that ritualistic stuff like that? I don't know. I don't know. I still claim him as my teacher, you know what I mean? Uh, uh, a man is a man. Yeah, of, course, of, course, of course, of course, of course. You know, uh, um, you were, were the first one to teach me how to eat chicken. You were the one, brother... How do you eat chicken? Huh? How do you eat chicken? How do you eat chicken? What do you mean? You eat the meat. Oh, eat the meat, spit the bone out. That's what everything. So back to your original point, everything is a school of thought, man. So all the lessons from the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, Wa'alaikum Shalom, all of the teachings from uh, 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 Noble Drew Ali, all the teachings from uh, Dr. Malachi Z. York, all the teachings from Dr. Ben, uh, Dr. Sabi, all these are just lessons. Imagine if you was in the fifth grade and you got so caught up with the teacher of your fifth grade class, Miss whoever that was and using grade school, if you were so infatuated and so caught up into what she was doing until you missed a whole damn semester, you failed all the tests, you didn't learn anything, or well, you would be doomed to repeat the fifth grade over and over until you understand this is just a teacher. Don't get caught up in the teacher. Did you get the lesson? Not the messenger, but the message of the people, right? All through scripture, you got people who's fucked up. Paul and David and Goliath, everybody was tore up, giving the message, right? Even myself talking to you all right now, I'm not all right, right, and exact. I make mistakes and I'm full of mistakes, and I'm working to correct those mistakes. So if we, take, if we take time to judge the person and not the message, then we already failed the class. So all these things were school of thought, man. What happens is with the Moors, the Moors get so infatuated with the teacher, and they put forth the teacher first, which is Noble Jew Ali. Nothing wrong with that. They put the teacher out front, and they stand behind the teacher. With the Nation of Islam, they put Ilana Elijah Muhammad out front and stand behind him, or Minister Farrakhan and stand behind him. With the Masonic Order, they put the Square and the Compass out front and stand behind that. When you find a man like me or yourself who's a free thinker, who understands that sign, and we don't stand behind behind no teacher, then we, then we the problem. We the problem. I think, I don't know who all on the feed. I think I'm the only person on the feed. I have been a Mason. Still am a Mason. I'm not active, but I'm still a Mason. I'm a past master. I'm of the 90th degree of the Hermetic philosophies. You don't hear too many brothers saying they passed 33rd. I'm a 43rd degree and also a 90th degree. So I deal with Hermetic philosophies. If you don't know who Her Hermes is, go look him up. There's nobody but thought. Right? Or who we call Tahuti. So I'm in that school of thought. Then the Moore Science Temple, I sought as the Minister of Information for the Moore Science Temple as well. So I know what I'm talking about, family. Um, 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 if, if I could share this with the family, you know, uh, a lot of people may not know my relationship with uh, Ponder, but um, he is the Minister of, 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 of Information above me. So in the organization I'm at, this is me, I'm here, and above me is the Minister of Information. That's how that's the relationship between him and I. You know, I, I got some information, but he's my minister of information. You know, mm. just to let the family know, you know, you truly are, you know, uh who you say you are. Right. And and, and, and you know what else, brother? I told somebody else a long time ago. I said, Brother Crom, and you are, brother, you gotta take this title. I said, Brother Crom is a goddamn scientist. <laughs> It's brother, it brother give you all the science you want. I tried dabbling the science, that ain't my lane. My lane is history. I said, I can give you the history. It brother can give you the science. He is a scientist. I'm a historian. So I think in the same perspective, and I look at your page, look at your growth, and I'm like, damn, I mean, that brother was one of my three students in my class I had when I first started teaching. This brother done went full throttle. And I'm just, you know, thankful that I'm be, be part of the program. But the people on your listening audience have to understand, y'all got to go read, y'all. Y'all got to read, man. Y'all got to read. And when you read something, 
don't don't take it at face value. You take your own understanding and you give your own interpretation. That's all I'm doing. That's all Brother Crom is doing. We've done the research and we're telling y'all what we think about the research. That's it. And as far as the Morris Science Temple, I love the brothers at Morris Science Temple. I Me love too. them. I love them. I think the last Morris Science Temple meeting I went to, I stood up and uh, when I got ready to teach a lecture, I st- <laughs> I began to speak in Arabic, and them brothers was like, no, you can't speak in Arabic. And I ain't been back since then. I love them to death, though. I love them to death. I ain't been back since then. The Masonic Order, I stood up, and I began to give lessons on how to unlock Solomon's temple. They ran me away. So what I collected was, well, damn, they don't want the truth going out in these organizations. Why is that? And that began me on my journey to research, brother, and I found out that the Masonic Order, the NOI, the Morris Science Temple, and it's one group we have not talked about yet that I don't know who's on your feed, but you you, you got to gross at least a million or more a year to be part of this black elite group, and that's called the Boulay Society. The Boulay Society is another black organization that if you're not in with them, they don't fuck with you. The Boulay Society is people like W.E.B. Du Bois. W.E.B. Du Bois was part of the Boulay Society, and these uppity Negroes are in place to keep certain other black people under constraints because they make money off that. The Boulay Society make money off all black, uh, black Lives Matter. The Blue, Boulay Society make money off the Civil Rights Movement. The Boulay Society make money off anything black, any, anything that keeps us down, they perpetuate it to keep the money going. So when Marcus Mosiah Garvey came along and said, no, we can go back to Africa, start our own movement, brothers of the Boulay Society, like W.E.B., damn the boys, and the boys went against that, calling them niggas, calling them a bunch of crazy niggas. W.E.B. Du Bois had an opportunity to also help out Noble Drew Ali. He turned it down. All of them. So the Boulay Society, Nation of Islam, Moore Science Temple, and some Masonic organizations of black people are not out to help us as a people. And I make that decree. I'm telling you that right now. You know, and and um, I really appreciate what you said about, you know, when you made the analogy of in fifth grade and I had my favorite teacher and I was so caught up on a teacher, I failed fifth grade because I I got lost in the teacher versus focusing on the message. You know, um, I came up on more time. I was doing my thing pri- uh, previously to meeting you. I was doing that. But when I came across you, when I came across, you know, my, my grand sheik, he's still my grand sheik. I don't care what he say about me. He's still my grand sheik. Go tell him I, t- I said that. <laughs> when I came across you, when I came across my, my, uh, my uh, grand sheik, you know, um, it changed me and sent me to that next level. It really sent me to that next level. And, um, you know, with that said, I was just all about the information. And as I was going in, the family was like, you know, in terms of getting lost in the teacher. And I'm not saying this is not what we should do. And, and you know, we, we have a lot of Moors on the page. Moors, I'm not saying this is not what we should do. But the Moors keep telling me, put the prophet out front, put the prophet out front, put the prophet out front. And I'm like, well, I want to put the teaching out front. I want to put the message out front. And I even tell the family, you know, with Crumb, don't put my prophet out front. You know, to anybody out there who is a Crumb Snatcher fan, fuck Crumb Snatcher. Crumb Snatcher died tomorrow, don't know. It's the message that is most important, you know. Martin Luther King, I'm not saying he was good, bad, indifferent, but even he passed, the idea, the message, the idea, uh, 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 that, that energy continued to go on. And I think, you know, you talk about focusing on what's most important. I can't agree with you more. Yeah. That's what we all have to do. We all have to focus on the message and not so much the messenger. And I think out of all the uh, black societies, we've gotten so caught up on the messenger. We became so infatuated with the messenger. And this goes out to people. I seen somebody just posted people like um, Jay-Z or Beyonce's of the world. They put the person out front so hard till they begin to do what's called they, they, they idolize. Some brothers would say they idolize Noble Jew Ali. Some brothers idolize Anub Elijah Muhammad. Some brothers idolize uh, Farrah Khan. But when you idolize somebody, that means that they are your idol. Now, like all idols, all idols must um, have a certain uh, reverence, or you must you must you must praise these idols, right? 
in what's the word I'm looking for? Um, what's the word I'm looking for? When you when you, when you really like something, what do you do with it? You're infatuated. So, infatuated. You become infatuated. Infatuation takes over your imaginary sensories to where you elevate this person, these people, to the state of godship. And that's exactly what has happened with the nation of Islam. They have elevated W.F. Farad Muhammad to the level of godship, right? And even in the Moorish Science Temple, they have took Noble Jew Ali and put him to the level of godship. And by this, what I mean is you can't say anything wrong about him. He didn't do nothing wrong. He didn't join no circus. He didn't travel the world. He wasn't a magician. You can't say that kind of stuff about him. And then when you go to the nation of Islam, you can't say anything about um, Farad Muhammad. He was all wise, right, and exact. And then to the civil rights or to the black people, you can't say anything wrong about Dr. Martin Luther King, who was holding around on his wife. We know that. That, that ain't nothing. To like, if, if, if they had a camera following Dr. Martin Luther King back in the 60s, it would have been the, 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 the real husbands of the civil rights movement. It would have been a goddamn reality show. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Dr. Martin Luther King was so popular throughout America. The same thing with people right now who become popular on social media. DM be blowing. Dr. Martin Luther King had a DM back then. Could you imagine? <laughs> How many followers you would have on Instagram right now? But see, people want, don't want to think about that. They don't want to deal with the bad, want to deal with the good. Dr. Martin Luther King was holding around. What's the big deal? It does not change his message. If I could add value to that, you know, just like my frustration is when I speak truth that may not be romantic to their history, I see yep. the same thing, the, the same reaction with my grandma. You know, and I talk about my grandma all the time on my page. Grandma, I can't, I can't say nothing bad about the preacher. I don't care how right and exact it may be. I'd be like, Grandma, you know, the preacher need to stop buying Cadillacs. You know, Grandma, I'm not trying to hear that. Ain't nobody, you no. Know, be, be, because no. in her mind, he can do no wrong. He can walk on water. You know, he can have sex with the, with the, with the, uh, the, the secretary of the church, you know, and, yep. and because of his status, because he's been idolized, now, you know, you know, he's another Jim Jones. That's exactly what they do, brother. When, when, when we, as a people, when, when we really like somebody or they tell us all the good shit in life, we begin to idolize them. Never hear the bad shit at all. I want to speak on something real quick. A brother had, um, hold on. Well, some, somebody just said, stop. They said uh, they took the Israelite knowledge and turned it into wickedness, and Yahweh turned the image to a white man. I don't know about that one. I don't know about that one. That's another group, too, we ain't dealt with. I, I was thinking the same thing. Now, the Hebrew one, Israelites. One thing I want <laughs> to, uh, to give you a kudos on, you know, yes, you are very familiar with more science. Yes, you are very familiar with uh, masonry. Now, in addition to that, and, and of course, uh, you know, FOI uh, and uh, um, I'm sorry, uh, fruit of is the fruit of Islam and the nation of Islam. However, you were the one who put me on the, uh, you know, the teachings of the Hebrew Israelites. Now, the Hebrew Israelites. Oh, boy, this group is a couple of them on the feed. You know what I mean? They the same way. They the same way. They group is all wise, right and exact. And they don't want to deal with the so-called Egyptian brothers. I've never seen a group of Hebrew Israelites that liked or dealt with Egypt as way they do. They 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 can't they 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 have spit on Egypt. They can't stand brothers who go into Kemet. They call them the the Kemet brothers. They don't deal with the Kemet brothers. And I said, well, I wonder why not. And I began to read that throughout the whole so-called Israelite family tree. All they did was deal with Egyptian women. All of them fuck Egyptian women. They all did. One of their now one one of their prophets, Moses, said Moses was taught in all the ways of the Egyptians. <laughs> all and then he and then and then Yusuf or Joseph they call him right when his brothers them abandoned him in the hole right and we can't Pharaoh needed his dream interpreted right. So Joseph had ended up interpreting the man's dream. Pharaoh saw fit to make this Israelite an Egyptian king over Egypt. So then what happened is when Joseph marries Pharaoh's daughter, they have two kids, Ephraim and Manasseh. Ephraim and Manasseh are Egyptians. They were born in Egypt. They came out of an Egyptian womb. 
some kind of way, they made it into the family of the Israelites. Now they are Israelites. So I asked the Hebrew Israelites, I said, the reason y'all don't like Egyptian so much or Egyptian theology or the Kemet teaching so much, how is it that you guys stayed in Egypt? Y'all stayed in some Egyptian ass the whole time. Y'all stayed fucking Egyptians. As a matter of fact, what's his name? Yeshua el Mashiach, they call him, or, or in Islam, as we call him, Isa Maryam, or Jesus, he got sent to Egypt for 13 years. He was there the whole time. His whole family just moved there. And I asked him, I said, well, if your child was raised in Virginia Beach for 13 years, he would go through pre-K all the way up to middle school. If you move that child to China after that, he would have a very hard time learning anything else because he's taught in all the ways of the Egyptians. So from Jesus to Joseph to Moses, um, what's his name, who married Rachel? They all had Egyptian wives. And it was just, it fucks me up that they don't deal with Egyptians. It messes me up. So then I asked the Hebrew Israelites, I said, so you guys are so infatuated with Israel, they say Israel, or, or, or Yaqub, or Jacob. What about Jacob's uncle? Who's Jacob's uncle? Jacob's uncle was the first child of Ibrahim, which was Ishmael, they call him. He was the first out of the, out of the nut sack of Abraham. This was his real seed. <laughs> now, we know the story of, what's his name? Of, uh, of Isaac and all them cats. They came by way of, eh, Holy Spirit came down like they did Mary, like they did Elizabeth, all that shit. It didn't really say Abraham slept with her to give birth to him, but he definitely slept with Hagar, who was an Egyptian. <laughs> so so they, they, they say, well, Ishmael didn't get the blessing that Everybody else, they, 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 he didn't get the blessing. Go read the scripture. An angel came to Hagar and told her that she would be blessed. Now go back. Go back to your servant. And she went back to Ibrahim, right? So the point I try to make is, man, when you deal with these organizations, at surface level, they all seem to be all wise, all wise, right, and exact at surface level. It's not until you start to dig and really dig and you read the history of every each individual person, you find out this all some bullshit. Awesome bullshit. And what I found out today in my class, I have a young lady from Nigeria in my class. And I told her that black people didn't come from Africa on no slave ship. Oh, yes, they did, brother. They did. Then I said, I said, what 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 the ship's at? I don't, I don't, I don't know. So it dawned on me that they're teaching our brothers and sisters in Africa the same dumb shit they're teaching us over here in America, that we all came out of the jungles, swinging by trees. A bunch of ignorant-ass people trying to cook white people in pots. The same narrative. So what we learn, they learn. And I'm asking you guys, on this feed, do some research, y'all, on these organizations. The Moore Science Temple, the Masonic Order, the FOI, the Boule, uh, the Alphas, the Kappas, the Sigmas, SG Rho. Research these organizations and find out the root of these organizations, not the fruit. It looks good. It looks good. The more scientists look real good. Brothers walking around with Fez is on. Islam more. Islam more. Islam more. Until I walk up in there and I begin to talk to these motherfuckers and I say, Bismillah, Rahman, Al Rahim, Alhamdulillah. And they're like, what the fuck are you talking about? They don't know. No, they know no Islam for real, right? That and then, word Islam. <laughs> Islam. So, research, family. Research, family. Research. Please research. I don't debate with people. I only debate with my equals. Everybody else I teach. That's Dr. Ben. I'm, I got to quote Dr. Ben. I don't argue with nobody, Crumb. You know that. I used to, but not no more. I know. Right? right? If a brother want to argue history with me, I ask him when and where it happened. And they stop because they don't know when and where it happened. They heard what happened, right? If brother try to argue with you, you're going to give them the science on it. If they don't know the science, then they got to be quiet. Yeah. What brother say? So what's up with that slave shit they found in Alabama? I'm not saying there weren't slave ships. A slave ship is just a ship that they pack people on. People, come on, y'all. These fantasies they show you on 12 Years a Slave and Amistad and, and Roots and these, they had to show you the movies to get you to believe the shit happened. This is Hollywood, and I won't get into what Hollywood really means, but the Hollywood is perpetuating these damn movies in y'all mind to make you think that your people voluntarily, some of them did, stayed on these ships the whole ride and just sat there quietly it's 1,500 Negroes, one captain, one first mate. It's five people, white people, selling the ship, but it's 1,200 just sitting there quietly 
waiting to arrive in America. That's the wrong ship. Those ships came in the 1920s to uh, Ellis Islands. Those were those ships. Those were the slave ships. The slave ships came to Ellis Islands in the 1920s. Look up at the word slave. Slave is the word Slavic. The Slavs came to New York in 1920s on Ellis Island, right? Your ancestors who came on so-called slave ships went to Southern America and Central America. That was it. Let me set the record straight on this shit real quick. No slaves from Africa came to North America. There are three Americas, North, Central, and South. Right. If you say right. the slaves came from Africa to America, I ask you which America they come to. If you tell me they came to North America, I ask you when, what year. If you tell me the 1600s or the 1700s, I'm going to ask you what was in North America during the 1700s and 1600s that they was harvesting. Shit. Tobacco came about in the last part of the 1700s, early 1800s. Tobacco was wiped out as a cash crop in Virginia, and cotton took over. Then why were there so many slaves on plantations down south? Did you Negroes know, and I'm saying Negroes respectfully, did you Negroes know that there were more black slave plantation owners than white plantation owners? Between New Orleans, Mississippi, and Alabama, the ratio was two to five, Black owners against white owners. That's a fact. That's a fact. There were more black plantation owners in the South than there were white plantation owners. So this narrative they show you about white people owning Negroes by the dozen, hundreds of niggas in the field, won't run, scared of three or four dogs, not true. Not true at all. What do you say? Oh, I'm trying to catch what he's saying on here as well. Brother Funder, may you inform us of your belief slash way of life current culture. I don't have a belief. I don't believe, brother. All, res all the respect. I know. Believing is for babies and children. They believe. They have to make believe. I don't believe. I know. I know. I guess you want to know, am I a Christian? Am I a Muslim? Am I a Buddhist? Am I... Di yeah. I'm all of them. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and you know, somebody had asked me the same thing a little bit earlier in the feed. Oh yeah. And I, I didn't say anything, but I wanted to just put it out there as well. I too, as well, am all things. All things, all things, and that's why we always say we give honor to all the prophets. Oh, See, I think what we should start doing, brother, is when we start off talking, we should begin by giving honors. That way, they understand we give honors to all the people. So if you own here and you believe in Buddha, right? If you believe in Confucius, peace. right? If you believe in Yeshua, peace. peace. If you believe in who Allah, peace. If you believe in Obatila, Ongun, <laughs> Shongun, then peace. We got y'all, man. <laughs> You're talking to the gods, man. We got y'all. We got y'all. We got to stop the separation. It's the whole point I think Kron putting out here, man. Let's stop the separation and the division. If you put a nation of Islam, I love you, brother. If you need help, I got you. If you're more science than my brother, I got you. I don't care what organization you're a part of. If I can help you beyond the length of my cable toe, then I got you. If okay. I can't, I make a phone call for you. If I can add value to that really quickly, you know, Absolutely. one of my brother's good brother, I said, brother, let's work together. He said, but what about the elephant in the room? And I was really confused. I said, what elephant? He said, I'm a Christian. I said, brother, if your house was... Uh, if if your house was burning down and I came to save you, would you ask me, what about the mm. elephant in the room? At the end of the day, if you need help and you be like, I, I can't accept your help because you're a Moor. I can't help your, accept, uh, you, you, your help because you're a Muslim. I can't accept. Family, that's, that's cutting off your nose in spite of your face. I'm not going to let exactly. these small things divide me from, from, from people who can help me. That's exactly what it is. I had a sister um, here this week while I'm teaching. I, I was telling the class, I said, well, I don't eat beef or pork. She said, oh, you're Muslim? I said, actually, it's in the Bible that you're not supposed to do that, not in the Quran. <laughs> she said, is it? I'm like, yeah. And I showed her, she said, oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> I said, now, let's pretend for a minute that I was a Muslim and not a Muslim, because I am a Muslim now. If I was a Muslim, and you were, she said she was a Christian, so she didn't want to have conversation. Cool. I said, let's take your idol, 
Jesus, who we call Isa Maryam. Let's take Jesus for a second. I said, now, there are over 32 times in the Bible that Jesus said, peace be unto you, whether he was leaving or whether he was coming. This is Jesus talking. And I said, so I said now, this is in English. He said, peace be unto you in English. I said, what language did Jesus speak? She said, I don't, I don't know. I said, it's called Amharic. Amharic is a, the beginning dialect of what's called Arabic, right? I right. said, now, in Jesus' language, what would he have said 32 times in the Bible? She said, I don't know. He would have said, assalamu alaikum. In his language, he would have said, assalamu alaikum. So was Jesus Muslim? Or was Jesus a Christian? She said Jesus was a Christian. I said, ah. He couldn't be something during his time of life that came after he died. You don't get Christians after he died. Right. So what was Jesus' belief? He said, well, he was a, a Jew, a Hebrew. I said, ah, no. Because the Jews persecuted him for working on Saturday. Jesus, when he, yeah, Jesus had to get a donkey out of the ditch. And the uh, Pharisees said, look, you can't work on Saturday. Jesus said, ah, oh, that's man's law. <laughs> that's hogwash. That's man's law. And then he argued with the Kohanes again by telling, him, by telling them, I am who I am. Me and the Father are one. And they ain't believe the brother, of course. This is about to stone him at the time. I don't believe that. And Jesus told them, I know who you are. You of your father, the devil. He's a Jewish priest he's talking to. So was he Jewish? Nah. Not at all. Not at all. Not at all. <laughs> Not one bit. <laughs> he wasn't Jewish. He wasn't a Christian. Could he have been a Muslim probably? And you don't get Muslim or the word Muslim or you don't even get the word Islam or the religion Islam until 1929 when the first Quran was printed. Let me try it again. So there were no such thing as ancient Muslims because the word ancient predates the word Muslim, right? Back right. then, they were called Mohammedanism or Mahatmadians. Or if you put it in their native language, it was called Mukmin or Mukminati. They were the faithful ones of the book. What book? of the Old Testament at the time. Yes. That's why you find Abraham in the Holy Quran. That's why you find Moshe in the Holy Quran. That's why you find Jesus mentioned in the Holy Quran more times in the Bible, because the Holy Quran is the second part of the book of the Bible. So I'm asking the sister all this information. I'm saying, you don't think Muslims and Christians are one and the same? She said, no, they're not. They're different. I said, huh? I showed his sister 17 passages in the Bible where everybody prostrated. Prostration family is how Muslims pray. They get on their hands and their knees, put their forehead on the ground. Jesus prostrated in the Garden of Gethsemane. Blue sister mine. I said, now why is Jesus prostrating? Could he be a Muslim? She said, I, at this point, she's starting to think a little bit. She said, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think he's a Muslim though. Fine, fine, fine. I said, did you know I asked her to name the 12 tribes of Israel. She named all the 12 tribes of Israel. It was great. They came from uh, Jacob. I said, what about Jacob's uncle, Ishmael? He had 12 tribes too. She said, really? I said, yeah. Did you know the third tribe of Ishmael was the tribe of Kedar? And the tribe of Kedar is the same tribe that uh, Muhammad the prophet came out of? Brother, you teaching your ass off. So if Muhammad the prophet comes out of the tribe of Kedar and Kedar is Ishmael's third son and Ishmael is Ibrahim's first oldest son and he's Jacob's uncle, then the Ishmaelites and the Israelites are the same. Now, can an Ishmaelite be an Israelite? Of course. Of course they can. Well, how? Let's go to the story of Ruth and deal with Milion and Chilion. Let's deal with, um, uh, what's her name? Opal and Ruth. And Ruth, right? And Myra. Right. Myra took Ruth to Boaz. Now, Boaz was an Ishmaelite. Ruth was a Moabite. Moors, pay attention. Ruth, as a Moabite, denounced her nationality and accepted Ishmaelite. 
and became a Ishmaelite. So when the Moors say that we are Moabites, we're a group of people who don't stand for nothing. We denounce our nationality and we accept the Ishmaelites. So when I tell you the Moors science temple at its root, who claim to be Canaanite Moabites, right? And we right. know that the Moabites came by way of uh, Lot's nephew, right? Sleeping with his daughters. You, you, you mean I Abraham mean Lot. Abraham's nephew Lot, keep me honest. Lot, Lot yeah, sleep, yeah. With, sleep with his daughters and create the uh, nation of Moab. Out of the nation of Moab, you have Ruth. And the Moors say that Ruth is the great, 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 great grandmother of Jesus. I asked them, how is that? How is that? By way of Boaz? It's nowhere written in the Bible, brother. It's not written about. They are creating a story to tie the Moors and the Moabites into the family of the Israelites. Now, the Moors, by way of Ruth, are tied into the family of the Israelites when she marries Boaz. Then Boaz gives birth, well, she gives give a son named uh, Obed, Obed begot Jesse, Jesse begot Saul, David, and David got Saul. So what the Moors are saying, what our understanding is, that we are Israelites too. What the Muslims are saying, we are Israelites too. What the Christians don't know is, they're all the same fucking family. That's what they don't realize, understand. So when the brother asks me my belief, I tell them I'm everything. I'm all of them. We're all amalgamated family. We're all amalgamated. Now, who was chosen? Who got the blessing? Who got the lesson? That shit is irrelevant. Because if you tell me, the brother just said, the Moabites were not the chosen for that reason and others. So what he's saying is, Yahweh, oh, let me get the right guy. Hold on, brother. Yahweh, was it Yahweh or was it uh, El Elyon or was it El Shaddai or was it Jehovah Jireh or was it Jehovah Nisi? Or was, which God was it? <laughs> God. God. And it's polytheism, 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 what it is. All throughout the Bible, these multiple gods are blessing multiple people, and they make you think it was all one God. But it was not. That's a damn lie. That's why in Islam, they say, Bismillah, Rahman, and Rahim. It begins all things in the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful, the Lord of all the lords. I bear witness that there's but one God, and he is alone. He has no partners or no equals. That's what Islam believes. In Christianity, they got the three gods, the Father, the Son, and the, and the uh, Holy Ghost guy. Right. They try all that stuff. And then when you go to the Hebrew community, they, he, who, who are you talking to? One may say Jehovah. One may say uh, Adonai. One may say uh, Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Nisi. Uh, it's, it's, it's too many gods. It's too many gods to deal with. Way too many. The point of what I'm saying is family is everybody is together. Everybody one family. Everybody come from one seed. And that's what me and Kron trying to teach y'all right now. Whether you Nation of Islam, whether you Moors, whether you Masons, whether you Bikers Club, whether you a goddamn Kappa, Alpha, whatever organization you win, if your skin look like mine, let's come together. <laughs> let's come together. And cut the bullshit. Let's let's cut the bullshit. <laughs> Free thinkers, man. Free thinkers. Brother, you know, um, I was a little concerned because, you know, when I posted your video, you know, and I know we only have an hour on Instagram, so you didn't, you know, because usually when, you, when I go to your classes, because you do teach, you, you, you're a legitimate teacher, not only in your professional profession, but within occult studies, esoteric science, the whole, the whole shebang. You know, when I go to your classes, your class is like four hours. So you and know, they go by quick as hell. We only got an hour on Instagram, family. So when the brother's saying something, you'd be like, oh, well, that's, well, he didn't get a chance to say the whole thing, right? And that's why when we right. under are, are offline and we talk, the, bro, the, the brother's like, come on, we might have to do a series on this because it's just too much information. It is. It is. It is. And, and, and that, that's what, matter of fact, I think YouTube gives you how long on YouTube? Eight hours. You can do eight hours on YouTube. Can you do the whole thing, the whole group thing like on YouTube? We could. We could if you want to. We can make Okay. That. Yeah, I'm just, uh, yeah, we'll probably, at some point, let's do that. Let's get a subject together, a couple of subjects together, and then time in. Whatever the case is, we can we can do it that way. But family, we got to work together. We got to get together, man. Um, if y'all not paying attention, these Mexicans taking over. 
The Latino bros are everywhere. I'm starting to see a lot, lot, lot more uh, Latino advertisement going on too around different locations. So they're gonna be the next community. I think what's his name, uh, Dr. Claude Anderson? Yes. Said this about four years ago that we're going back to the bottom rung as a people, back into what's called slavery. If we don't, I'm telling y'all, man. I'm telling y'all. Let's get together. And regardless of what you believe or what you think, what organization you with. You be the only one in your organization that comes to our meetings then, so we can have everybody in the same room. I did a panel discussion a while, a couple of years ago, where I had everybody on the panel. I had Nation, remember that shit? I had Nation of Islam up there. I, I you know, let me interject and, you know, uh, send your praise for you. you know, our city, our state, the area we live in, me, you and I, is pretty segregated, is divided in terms of our people. And, you know, these yep. people don't come together. You you were the only person, the first person to bring the Moors, the Israelites, the uh, 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 I think it, it, it was a, 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 a comedic priest there. You had um, uh, I, you had so many different schools of thought all under one roof, and I think there was at least twenty people who told me personally they had never seen anything like what you had done. That's true. They never get a chance to see that. I had I had the um, uh, Supreme Grandmaster. Oh, no, he's just Grandmaster for, for Tri-State, for the Masonic Order up there. I had the Comedic Brother up there. I had a book from the 5% up there. You know what I mean? I had everybody I could think of up there. The only person, I didn't have any witches or warlocks up there. That's another section. But I had a brother from Nigeria. He was there. And... and and when I realized I had put all those thoughts in one room and there were no questions asked, <clears throat> there were no questions asked. I even let the brother from the, uh, from the, uh, uh, Hebrew Israelites lead in prayer. And when he led in prayer, did not everybody stand up? Yes. Didn't the Moors stand up? That's right. Nation of Islam stood up. Yes, sir. The Christian preachers stood up. I had everybody on the panel stand up and give reverence to one God. It's probably the only time they've ever gave reverence to one most high. So when I tell y'all this feed, man, it's all the same thing. But I'm telling y'all, man, it's all the same thing, man. This brother prayed to a whole room full of mixed people, right, in the ancient Hebraic language, if you will, which is not a language, but he prayed in that language. Everybody stood up and gave reverence, man. So that's how I know for sure it's all the same thing. Well, br br brother, I don't want to hold you up. I I know you're actually at work right now. I wanted to ask, yes, you know, if you could just let the people know who you are, you know, throw a couple plugs, whatever you want to do. And, you know, I'll let you in this, you know, the way you see fit. Absolutely. I'm going to put my um, Instagram up there, where the case is. Brother Ponder, I'm known, I'm known in the conscious community at brother, as Brother Salam Sadek L. Right? Brother Jacoby Ponder, I'm a chef, I'm a teacher, I'm a motivator, I'm a coach. Mainly of all, I'm a historian. I like to teach. That's what I do. So anytime Brother Crom bring me online with him, which is always an honor, grab your pen and your pad. I'm not here to convince y'all nor persuade y'all. It's just information. All right? Peace and love. Remember to keep your heart pure with love, your body clean with water. <laughs> Until next time, family. Islam. Islam.